ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Ben motherfucking ready. Yo, 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 yo. What's happening with it? Welcome to episode one of Pond Around with Being Ready. Um, some of you may know me, some of you may not. Um, uh, you, may, you may know me from Seriously Not Another Podcast. Uh, you may know me from uh, No Rules. You may know me from Cat vs. Dog uh and a whole bunch of other stuff but here we are today um which actually the the first episode so um the pilot will be released uh, a week before today so it may be some things added you know we're doing some pre-recorded things but today i have in here a, a special special guest man um this dude uh met about about what uh seven years ago seven years ago bro yeah seven seven years. I met about seven years ago um uh we worked together um <clears throat> and it's a it's a trip how uh stars in line you know what i'm saying first I, i'm gonna say uh we got we got joseph sanchez in the building <laughs> you know what i'm saying those that that know uh he's the owner of lost pets and sons you know what i'm saying um which is a, a art a art collective you know what i mean um can can you can you give a, a, a explanation of what the lost pet situation is uh lost pets was uh started like two years ago uh with the idea of just offering paint services uh drawings as far as like uh i don't know like references for people mm-hmm. um just design just design work pretty much uh, <laughs> murals um logos for uh, social media um uh it originally started with the idea when i was in new york with my friend hector uh we were there doing a the job for a brand, uh, the the La Ropa band, La Ropa, <coughs> yeah, La Ropa. They had opened up a store in New York and uh, had us uh, fly out there for them to to paint their store. And I was just thinking that we needed to come. We, my, me and my friend Hector had been painting for, for, together for so long, doing commission work. Felt like we just needed to come up with a <coughs> actual name or a brand. Or, <coughs> so. Let's let's get into. I don't know if, if we can say lost pets before lost pets. But for those that's watching them um, and being followers of uh, Townhouse Media, um, he's the artist that created the logo for um, uh, Seriously Not Another Podcast, uh, the original Cat versus Dog, uh, Sports for You. Uh, uh, the no rules, um, shit. Uh, you what else? You what? What other logos you did for? You did something else? Oh, the the, the damn townhouse media situation with the townhouse media logo. Uh, you did you did so so many things, and we we can get into the art, uh, the art part of it, um, on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. Let's 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 jump all the way to quote unquote as they say the beginning. Like where where you was uh born and where were you raised at? I was born in uh in Glendale, Cal- uh, California, not uh, not too far from here. Mm-hmm. I was re- there till like nineteen. I was there till like ninety seven. Then I moved to um, North Hollywood in like ninety seven ninety eight. And then I had was born and I was raised there pretty much. <coughs> so this is the Glendale area. Is, um, is that what area is that considered? Is that that's is that part of the valley as well? Yeah, that's considered like San Fernando. It's yeah, it's so considered San Fernando Valley. 
it's weird, you know. LA County is so big, but that's considered San Fernando Valley, but it's its own district. Like it has its own the police department. And, I was about to say, like yeah, it's, it's its, it's own true. pocket, right? Like it's its own kind of pocket. It's like Pasadena. <laughs> um, so um, what was it like uh, growing up as a as a kid in the in the you know? Because you you also we had talks. You also uh, was out here on the, on the west side. Um, uh, some some of your time out here, but you know, uh, explain growing up in the valley and how was it growing up out there that way versus it, it versus what you've seen coming out here and explain why were you coming out to the west side of, of LA? Um, I remember growing up in Glendale, like uh, near like San Fernando Road and like uh, maybe the Atwater Village area. If you guys are familiar. Um, that, that area as a kid, it was like very industrial and like very in the beginning of developments, I think. But I just remember like going to the arcade and going over to, uh, other people's houses to play video games, um, or watching pay-per-view matches of wrestling. Um, I remember my uncles were like, my big brothers, they're like two, they're like three, three and like five years older than I am. So when I was like five and six, I was rolling with them whenever I could, whenever they would let me. <coughs> and they would uh, go over to their friends' houses. And <coughs> back then, being, uh, I don't know, it's different. It was always, it was just different. So, so like the, the, the dynamic switch versus so was it was it like the upbringing you had it, it was more it was more family based and how was that versus the 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 your surroundings because like uh you grew up more you grew up in the, the you know the inner city as well you know what i'm saying or you know so how was that that part like because because I, I i'm gonna say it like my age group growing up, you know, and we, we, I got what about five years on you. I think we about five years apart. Um, yeah. Um, my age group growing up, it was, the Valley was looked at as quote unquote, you know, soft, but Mm -hmm. the Valley, you fuck around going to Valley and get your shit. You, you get your shit split on the, on a whole bunch of streets out there. You know what I'm saying? So that's the, Oh, okay. Oh, I remember like, um, being aware of, of, of a gang culture, um, not just with like um, Latinos, with with just Asians too. I remember you would see them posting it up at a Pacific Park or at the mall. You'd um, my uncles would kind of hint towards me like, "Oh, you know, just don't don't look over there." Or just you know, I didn't really know what what they were talking about at the time, but I just remember <coughs> like things we would like. But I don't want to say it was like. Very, very gang <coughs> territorial where I was at because it wasn't at all mm-hmm. like that. At least I couldn't remember as a kid. Mm-hmm. But I remember like going over to like um, my uncle's friends. They were like uh, had different friends, like uh, Armenian friends and Filipino friends, and they had a friend on the other side of the street where we lived, and they had a Super Nintendo, so we'd go play a uh, Mario Kart. Hmm. And I remember one uh, probably like five or six. I couldn't. I, I don't know, dude. Super young. They took me to a payphone, and they were uh, calling the sex operators, <laughs> and they were like, "Hey, yo, come here, listen to this, you know." <laughs> and uh, I just remember the, "Hey, yo, are you looking for a good time?" One, one of those kind of things, you oh, know. Dude. And then I, I didn't know what that was going on. I was just like, "What's going on?" They were, they, they were getting kicks out of it, like, "Yeah," you know. So, so they, they, they already knew what was going on because they was older. Yeah. So they put yeah. you on the phone, like, "Hey." But see, back then too, thinking about it now, <laughs> the older kids knew <laughs> when to show little kids <laughs> shit. You know, like that probably was like to them the most extreme shit. But like even back then, like you know, your, your peoples would cover your eyes and shit. Like, oh, cover his ears, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Elders cover your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and go out of the room. It's an adult conversation type. Yeah. All right. So now you. Um, you uh you into you you of course into art you know um 
Now, as this young child, when did you develop these skills or you knew you can draw or your family was like, damn, you know, it, it was a gift like you've seen it. Can you remember far like where you can think how young you were when you started drawing like, oh, shoot, this is something I can run with? Uh, I don't remember when exactly, but I remember like my first drawing that like when you used to do book reports back in elementary school. Oh, yeah, and yeah. To, and you used to have to do the cover. Mm -hmm. That was like my favorite part, you know, drawing the, the cover for the book report. And uh, sometimes I would trace. And I remember my mom, when she started seeing my my my, infl my uh, interest in, in, uh, in drawing, she mm -hmm. had bought me uh, a Marvel a Marvel drawing guide that had like uh, pages that were transparent so you can trace over the, mm. the Hulk and shit. And it came with like these, uh, these uh, colored pencils. It was weird because it came with colored pencils, but you couldn't even draw on the, on the tracing paper. It didn't even make any, make any sense. But I just remember that Marvel thing and, uh, you know, like just uh, seeing, tracing and, I remember people used to used to try to come to school and be like, "Look what I drew," but you were like, "Nah, I have to trace that shit." Nah. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a tracer. That's it, straight posing up. Uh, <laughs> can't be a tracer. Hey, I know? remember them days. Can't be I remember them days. Like, yeah, you trace that shit. Um, <clears throat> so you, that was so that was a that was an important role that your that your mom noticed. Like, oh, you know, he made because that's important to children. You know that their parents like take attention or and pay pay attention to their child to know these type of things like oh he or she's into this let me you know what I'm saying S similar to how you notice you know with, with your child like oh you notice certain things and you letting her explore her way and it's a, that's a trip um so she noticed she noticed you drawing um now. At what age are you? Because I'm pretty sure at some point, you know, you you're drawing a. I can at, at at that young age, I can only draw stick figures. You know what I mean? Like so, at what age are you drawing? You you, you hitting characters? You um, without without the tracing and all that, like like, like Toy Story. Oh, Toy Story came out. Toy Story. Mm. I remember uh, drawing. Um, the cover of the Great Mouse Detective. The cover, the dog. I remember drawing the dog, and I and I remember studying the shapes, just looking at the shapes, all and how like the shapes are so simple, like mm -hmm. that kind of stuck. That kind of stuck with me, you know. And after that <coughs> was just like South Park, and from there was. Uh, mm. But at the same time, like my uncle, since they were older than me, they 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 were into graffiti, like. When I was in third grade, they were into graffiti because they were like in six, they were like a six and seventh, you know? Graffiti was becoming more mainstream at that time, like 90, 90, 96, 97. Like graffiti became super mainstream, I think, like even in hip hop and, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, it most definitely around that time, it, it was everywhere. <clears throat> uh, at, at, that, at that young age where you drawing that S that everybody learned how to draw. Mm -hmm. I was watching uh, Living Color, mm. and uh, <laughs> that for that for Sean Sean's name uh, isn't it S W one? Yeah, he's not even he's not even playing in nothing, but his his name is S W one. Like very very hip hop, very graffiti retro. You know, uh, S W one. Yeah, he was the uh, he was a DJ on there. Mm -hmm. S for S W V up. Uh, <clears throat> so. Now, uh, let's talk about, was there any, what uh, religion raised, like what type of, how, uh, was there any religion in the household or anything? Yeah. Um, I don't know what, uh, what is it, Dominion of Christianity might, is that called Dominion? Dominion uh, of Christianity? No, no, like, what, like the, you know how there's different, there's different. <laughs> Versions of Christianity, like oh, Baptist, like, like Baptist uh, and it's, uh, uh, Protestant, and stuff like that. Where, yeah, no, yeah. My bad. I'm thinking like freaking like Quakers and shit. But no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like we're, we're just Christian, like. But um, my 
think my I think originally my great my my grandparents were were Catholic and my gran my grandma converted to Christianity at some point and converted my grandpa. Mm. So my my great grandparents were were Catholic, but I don't think they were like practicing. Mm -hmm. So they were cool with us being Christian, you know, tripping. But yeah, I was raised Christian and I still have Christian values, I think, like subconsciously. Yeah. I don't, I'm not a practicing Christian, you know, but and just certain, certain beliefs and shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not. Yeah. Um. Now that was we had talks where that was a that was a part of your uh, the reason why you would come out here. You was going to church out here, right? Like, yeah, man. Thinking about it, like <clears throat> my uncles uh, and my, my my grandparents were going to church out here on Adams. Mm -hmm. Off the, uh, they'll get off on the ten. I'll take the 10, get off on that somewhere on Mount Adams and uh, in between uh, Crenshaw and what's that street where all those like big churches are at? That's uh, Crenshaw and like West, like West what? Boulevard. Yeah. Somewhere over there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. It's crazy. Like I was going there from, from a child to like probably like 2000 and 2000 and like a. Uh, 2007 maybe mm -hmm. I'm like yeah a lot a long and i had friends over there and you know that like a little boy scout thing going over there called royal rangers it was cool it was cool you know it was cool <clears throat> now having certain beliefs like being raised in a church and having certain beliefs how did how did that affect you growing up from you know from boy to to man you know in between or not not man from boy to it like was, that teenage, it was, it was tough in the beginning because um, when you when you become a when you're when you're being raised, you know how it is. People uh, people ask you ask you why you don't do certain things or, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it was good and bad. I'm not gonna lie. You know, really, when it came when it came from for me as a child, I feel like a lot of uh, too much religion or too much. Uh, too much of it could have be bad. It was bad for me, at least, because I feel like it kind of made me fearful. But at the same time, it worked. It kind of gave me like a like a moral compass in a weird way. Because while other kids were doing X, Y, Z, and you know, cussing, I always was thinking, "Shit, like I'm gonna go to hell," you know? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to hell for yeah, certain for, bad yeah. shit. Yeah, like, even, even 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 like profanity, like. Yeah, it was different. It was different. You know? <clears throat> Definitely different. Think different now, but it was good in that sense, you know. It I, it, it yeah. kept you away from certain things, and did you at, at certain points did you ever question like, man, why am I like these these fools over here doing X Y Z? Why I'm over here being like this? Or you yeah, just man, all the time, man, like all the time, like you know. I remember <clears throat> like just being in like an elementary school and like people asking like, how come you don't cuss? How come you don't cuss, Joe? Elementary school. How come you don't cuss, Joseph? You know, I used to say, shoot. It's like, what? <laughs> say shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? And he, these is little kids, like, telling you to cuss. Like, why ain't you cussing, bro? Like, come on, yeah. man. But I wasn't all good like that, man. I wasn't a, a, a good Christian kid like that, man. Yeah. I mean, in, uh, in fifth, like, fifth grade, somebody brought porno to school. They brought a porno magazine, you know, mm -hmm. like 98, 99, maybe. I had just moved to North Hollywood. And this kid, badass kid, I'm not going to say his name, but he's still a badass motherfucker. <laughs> but, who nuts. <laughs> but he, he brought a, a porno mag, and I had a, a homie named uh, Richard. And he had a homie named Marcus. It's two little white boys, man. They were cool, you know. Mm -hmm. They were like, uh, hey, man, you want to see something, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what's going on? You know me. I'm telling you, dog. I, had, I was naive, dog. Like, but I knew it was something crazy because it's the way they said it. Like, you want to go see some? Mm -hmm. I was like, it's probably gonna be a dead animal at the most, you know, dead, dead possum. And, and, and this is ninety ninety eight. Okay, so ninety nine. Okay, so. so we meet up with the with this guy. <laughs> this this fool was for sure had a 
<laughs> he was like, oh my God, dude. Thinking about it now, like back then, like, you know, now kids, now kids see things that they're not supposed to see very young. I think it's more normal. But back then, like, you can tell, like, I think it's it was a sign of behavior when you see kids just acting out. It's like they, they're seeing things, they're, they're seeing, they're being exposed to things that they're not supposed to. And it just explains a lot, you know, mm-hmm. as they grow older. But yeah, he, uh, we, we meet up behind a, a bungalow and he has stashed it like underneath like uh, those little, like a little vent, like where cats be going. And he pulled out the magazine. So he had a stash at school. He had brought the stash that, <laughs> that day, that day, just to show people. And it was like, the how do you find? <clears throat> how probably, do you find that was, area? That's crazy. Was, oh, the, he probably knew where it was at from hiding, you know, playing tag or something. But that's wow. The magazine he pulled out the magazine. It was one of those crazy ones. It wasn't even like a Playboy. It was like the like this full, full, uh, yeah, just porn, porned up. Yeah, that shit was. I remember the the first page he opened. It was like he was like showing. He was like, "All right, hey, I'll show you real quick, and uh, just don't tell nobody." And then maybe at recess we can see it. And I was like, yeah, what is it? And then he pulled it out. I already seen, I seen the front, which is like a naked girl. I'm like, that shit looks pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Opened up the first page. It was a cop, cop chick, her, her breasts out and shit, going crazy. Uh-huh. And then he opened up the, the, the third, like, the, he opened up like mid page and that shit got all pink. Shit was just pink. Everything was pink. Oh, shit. That yeah, shit was all spread, spread it eagled up. That shit. Now, look, look let me ask you this. As a, as a grown man, do you feel that? Seeing that that early, it, it puts something in you to want to explore more, like faster, or where you just like, you know, was it chill? Yeah, Did you probably? Yeah, probably. I'm like thinking think about it now because you know you have little girlfriends, at, you know, in elementary school and stuff like that. But I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't. I think it maybe subconsciously because I didn't really like start tripping out on chicks again to like seventh eighth grade you know mm-hmm. i felt like uh okay oh, i didn't even tell you what happened dog so we got caught dog they got caught we got caught looking at that shit oh the oh the oh the, 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 the. all right oh yeah we'll, we'll hop back into uh, that Let, let's hear about this uh you got y'all got caught at school <clears throat> looking at a porn book yeah so that was the beginning of school i just had got there right so they're like we'll, we'll look at it later and then at recess they're like hey joe you already seen it so go keep lookout go keep go keep cultural co busy so I went. I went to the handball court, and I remember I was, you know, I was thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk to Mr. Marcio and shit, like keep her distracted. And she's right there. She's like, "What's up, Joe? What are you doing?" I never play handball, dog. I'm just sitting down waiting in line. She's like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> and I'm looking at my homies, looking at her, and she's like, "Where are your friends at?" She turned around and she turns around and just sees them, and she just knew like, "What are these fools doing?" Okay, so they they in plain sight, look, hovered around the porn man. No, nah, they were hiding behind a bungalow, in between a, 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 a bungalow and like a storage bin, and there was a line, and everyone was huddling. Everyone was going towards there. Oh, other yeah. boys, so other boys. <laughs> so she probably thought it was gonna be a fight. <laughs> Something. It just didn't look right. Why are these kids going over there? So she ran over there. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm trying to whistle. I can't whistle. And then uh, <laughs> she got there looking at me, and then they're they're pointing at me. I'm like, nah, what? what? <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, so that, they, but that day was crazy because I remember um, at night my mom got home, and I'm expecting the, a crazy ass whooping. I'm expecting the <clears throat> crazy ass whooping. I remember I'm laying down like with the blankets, like man, she's gonna start whipping me. So I'm, got the blankets over. Yeah, and she came, and, up. And it was it was like some movie. She it was it was Wonder Years up. She she comes she sits next to me and she puts her hand on me. So like instead of the belt, it's her hand. She's like, did, did you get yeah, like yeah her? yeah yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so I, tell, I, tell, I tell my mom, I go, I, oh, mom goes, well, why are you looking at that? I go, mom, was it mine, mom? Because I know it wasn't yours, but why are you looking at that? I was like, oh, well, my friend just showed me. She's like, she's like, you shouldn't be looking at that stuff. You know that, right? You know, don't ever look that stuff again, you know? All right. <laughs> and I knew I felt bad, felt guilty and shit, you know? So. I never explored that shit until like later in my life and shit. It's crazy. And at this time, your mom is she's what? Uh, shoot. Yeah, my mom was, my mom was a young mom, dude. About your age right now? Huh? Yeah, my mom was young, dude. So <clears throat> now, so y'all y'all got caught. Was there a suspension or 
Is the tap on the wrist. You know what's crazy, dog? That I think they suspended me, and then my teacher told the other chicks, man. The teacher told the girls in my class, like, you know, Joseph and the fucking XYZ got caught with porno and shit. The little girls in the class? Yeah, bro. And, he, and they was creeped out after that. Nah, they were so cool with me. They're probably like, this was nuts. But oh, man. It was probably like cool in their eyes, but because I was cool with them. They knew I wasn't like that either. And they knew who was a culprit, dog. They knew. They knew because I was, I was cool, you know? Oh yeah, so they was like, yeah, he, they knew you weren't you weren't the ringleader yeah. of yeah. the situation because a bunch of kids got caught, bro, like like <clears throat> ten kids, like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so because I I remember when the coach walked over there, everyone was running, bro. Like there was this, there was kids who got caught that weren't even like they just had heard, so they're just walking oh, over there and got caught, like. Ah. Oh man, <laughs> I, I bet I wonder how uh, many <clears throat> how many of those kids like turned into creeps like after that. Oh man, I seen. Uh, I seen one of the, I seen my homie Richard actually. Uh huh. Like after high school, that fool was eight miled up. What, what you mean? <laughs> what you mean eight miled, nigga? <laughs> what you mean eight miled, dog? Like he he battling everywhere, he be rabbit up. <laughs> nah, it was just, it's just, so I'm on the bus, man. And it was just after high school, and I was like, damn, I haven't seen this fool since that, like that time, you know? Like, yeah. Who was throwing Lucas at cars, you know? When we were kids, like that, you know, being a little snotty those kids. So like, yeah. he was still like, he looked like, uh, he looked like, you know, like uh, those, <laughs> you know, the 90s, those badass kids, like like the Jinko kid, Jinko jeans oh, logo. He yeah. looked like a Jinko's, Jinko uh, logo and shit. So, oh, man. He looked like a badass kid. And I'm like, what's up, Richard? And he was just like, what's up, man? Like trying to be all cool. It's like, that's cool. You know. And then, and that that's I had a conversation with uh with uh Bizzle um about how you know being uh <clears throat> exposed to porn at a young age, you know what I'm saying? Like it can yeah. create like a certain monster in you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um it it and it's not even like your fault, like you know what I'm saying? Like some of us, you know, we found it. You know, like you found it through a friend, crazy ass friend. He probably found his dad stash or a big brother or a cousin, uncle, whatever the case. It was always in a toolbox. To, uh, you had the tool. <laughs> it was always in a red toolbox. Like, like that. every time I was exposed to to stacks of porn, it was always in a toolbox in the garage. On the garage, in the garage, or it was so you're, you're sleeping over at someone's house, and they're like, "We don't see my uncle stash or his videos," or you know, like yeah. that. You know, there wasn't there wasn't too many of those times, but you know, like it was always like someone else is exposing you to shit. That's what I'm saying. Like as a, like that shit wasn't in my house. Oh, you know, don't get me twisted. I, I feel like my family was I'm telling you they were Christian, man. But you know, what I'm saying like that shit wasn't in my crib. Yeah. <laughs> no, but one time in high school, I remember I had some friends over, and I fucking uh, we had the DVD uh, VHS combo player. Oh shit! And yeah. I, I wanted to show them some shit, and fucking I pushed play, and my uncle had his uh. Uh, Latin maids like fifty eight in nah. there. And they're like, "What's up, Joe? What the fuck is this?" I said, "Hell, no!" Nah. I'm saying, you know, every family is you know, they're not perfect. It was on the but tape we, side or DVD. It was on the tape, bro. Oh uh, man, okay. I tried putting, I tried putting in what DVD it was like, a, like probably like half baked or something, and we were stoned, and so it was funny, you know. You know, like, damn, this shit's crazy. My uncle lost it. Hey, that's crazy. So. Slip- so you say toolbox, so that's that's a terrible place to hide. Or, or it's a better place to hide than where porn was being hide, hid at when I was a child. When I was a child, it was being hid uh, just under beds. Under the bed, yeah. Like, I'm in my dad's room, fucking ball bouncing around, <laughs> fucking ball roll under his bed, and wow, <laughs> it, it ain't even far under there. Like, it's just right there, like, a piece. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like nah, it's open the open the book. Like what the? Shit. You know what I mean, it's like damn. <laughs> oh, damn. And then it seemed like once it, once it was found, it was just there. It was just everywhere. Like fucking VHS VHSs was cracking, popping up everywhere. Then you start watching. It's like damn, you watching this shit. Then fucking, I, I'm I'm the watcher and the lookout because I'm the only kid around. So you know what I'm saying? Like it was it was nuts, dude. Like. And that shit could f- yeah. form a, a crazy uh, addiction watching that shit, that, yeah. that young. That's true, dude, because um, I remember, like, uh, in high school, you know, I'm telling you, like, 
my family was pretty discreet. But like you said, like you find shit around. And I remember my uncle had the shout out to my uncle, man. Shit, shit. Oh, yeah, sorry. No names, no names. Yeah, no names, no names. Very many names. <laughs> this, fool, this fool had a, a Carmen Electra. Carmen Electra, like. Christmas edition and man, that shit was oh, jingle belled up. That shit was yeah, as a kid, man. Like that shit, just imagine. Like, but see, too, dog, I was exposed to uh strip tease at a young I saw I me and my uncle snuck into strip tease, bro. Cause my my mom I'm telling you, my mom was young, dude, and her naive naive ass was uh, watching uh strip tease with my, my mom was watching strip tease with my uncle and should me and my other uncle, the baby uncle, had to uh, watch Hunchback of Notre Dame. Okay. So <laughs> my mom didn't know there was going to be that explicit, so she took the oldest uncle, right? Uh-huh. So once Hunchback of Notre Dame was done, me and my, uncle, me and my uncle, youngest uncle were like, where my mom at? So we just sneak into strip tease because we know she's in there. Uh, we walk into the scene where she's stripping. I was right there just like... <laughs> Like, just <laughs> <laughs> just all, all mind blown. Just shit. fucking tripping out, bro. <clears throat> so like, I'm telling you, like, in the '90s, it was uh, almost like they they wanted you to just fucking find that shit, man. And that hey, that red toolbox was at the homie Nathan's house in the middle school, man. Shit was crazy. The red toolbox. That fool had the scratch and sniff. Like here, no. Nah. It was a scratch and sniff book. Are you serious? <laughs> what? Nah, dog. I'm serious. I'm dead serious, bro. Nah. Nate Nathan, dog. This fool had a moped. This fool was like a. He was one of. He was like one of. Yeah, he, was one of he was ahead of his time. Or, or he was like older than what he was doing too much. Yeah, yeah, way too much. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. So watching, um, or yeah, watching porn that young, bro. Like it can, it can mess up the mind. Um. You know, growing up, you know, you can do too much too fast, want to know too much, and that shit can fester into something crazy. Um, You know, it's a good thing that, you know, you were one of the type, and that's probably because of your your raising, you know what I'm saying, your upbringing, um, that you didn't, you ain't, you didn't have, like, just crazy multiple kids out here. And because a lot of that with addiction become – uh, the the addition that could be formed from watching that at that age can also come up um, like you know just wild <laughs> sex patterns and shit, like this yeah, so crazy man. you know what I mean so yeah um in that sense too religion kind of say uh it put a it put a cap on your creep you know what I mean cap on your creep <laughs> <laughs> yeah should put a cap on your creep man you like <laughs> some fools don't have it like you know like. Even the middle school, I'm telling you, I was just like, nah, I wasn't with that shit. Like, I would just go over to the homie's house and be like, look at this shit. I'm like, come on, bro. I'm here to play fucking Crash Bandicoot, yeah, dog. Yeah. Trying to be creeped up right now, dog. You should, you know, what the fuck you doing, dog? Yeah, I always <laughs> you know? thought I always thought that was weird for the, the fuck for, for, for the for the friend to be blasting out. I had I had a homie uh <clears throat> growing up. This nigga, yo, know, this nigga was the number one pervert of all time. Like this nigga was the head of his pervert. Like he was like this nigga was young, dog. This nigga yeah, would have ahead like, of his perf. Yeah, he was ahead of his perf, dog. Hell, dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, nah, for real, real shit. This nigga had, this nigga had a, uh, this nigga had a, a, a titty fetish, right? So, this nigga would have jugs, dog. Yeah, this nigga would have like uh, Polaroid pictures of females that he took. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even younger, this nigga would have like videos books all that shit he then that's what i say like when you watch it that that young it it can grow into other things like then yeah. it grew into okay now you have a fetish you have you taking pictures of chicks in these these you know these outfits like somebody that young you know i'm not saying he was a kid by the age but like at this age he's probably like a, a early teenager you know what i'm saying like a, i mean not teenager late teen like 19 18 you know, yeah, you can to have those fantasies at that age, yeah, just yeah. sex, but the Hatties, Polaroids, and it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like this nigga, yeah, that's it, creepy. if only fans was out back then, or you know, that type of shit was out back then, like he for sure would have been coming up because every chick on there just had like just the I mean, every chick that he had pictures of like was the largest nigga. The collection was crazy. Like his collection was up there with like people like 
my uh my big cousin. Like people that was that's why I say he was ahead of his perf. Like this nigga was uh like four years, I think he's like four years older than me, you know what I'm saying, with the porn collection of a of a 30 year old. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> probably, he's probably in the world now. Um I you know, I don't I don't know exactly where he is. Um I've heard from him years. Um I don't even remember the last time I seen him, but I do remember the last time I seen him. Even that time, it was a long time. So, uh, shout out to that guy. Uh, I don't know if he want his, I don't know if he want his name uh, mentioned, you know. But <clears throat> you know, um, so let's get back into the to the art situation um, or the upbringing. So, you got into uh, at what age did you get into? Graffiti, because you know, or is, is it safe? To, we don't have to say certain things like you, because the graffiti talk is cool. Huh? Yeah, we can talk about graffiti. All right, so you, you have you have a love for graffiti. Um, you know that was your. Did you feel like that was your niche, or that was like this is home? Like, what was your what was your your thing when it comes to art? Like, what was this is me? Well, I like I said, my uncles were older than me so when they when they were being influenced by their friends and the culture um of hip-hop and what was going on in la um just as a kid you couldn't you couldn't uh, escape it i think you know so my uncles they uh they picked up on it and would bring magazines over and video vhs's and every time they would see it in music videos they'd They'll show me like, look, look, you know, make it, make it like of an importance, you know. Mm. So as a kid, like that always stuck out to me. So like even in, I, I my earliest memories of moving to North Hollywood and trying to do people's names, you know, and getting in trouble for it too because you know they look like look, this kid's trying to do graffiti, mm-hmm. you know. But it was just you know just me trying to emulate my uncles, and. um when we go to uh, church, like I said, in uh, over there off of Adams, a lot of construction was going on. Mm-hmm. A lot of construction was going on in the in the late nineties. So my uncles were into into photography at that time too. You know, back then they would teach you like a I don't know, if, you know a, a Photoshop classes in middle school and high school. Mm-hmm. So they would take they would take photographs of the graffiti. So I was just this trip out. Eventually, just you know, start drawing, start drawing it. You know, I was like I couldn't, I couldn't go out and do it. I was, too, mm-hmm. I was way too young. So every every grade, it was just almost just like it was important just to just to draw to draw uh, letters. You know, and, and you also had a, a uh, you also have a, a deep love for hip hop as well too, right? Yeah, man, I, I love I love music in general. But I love hip hop for sure. I love it. That's like, I feel like it's I. It's like it's like the, the common denominator. Like I base everything off of like, the principles of hip hop. You know, like as far as like the fundamentals. Like you know the fundamentals. Like, right. Because <coughs> uh, we all know that <clears throat> graffiti is you know, the element. Um, and you are, uh, music wise, you as a person, <clears throat> we. Had talks of music. Uh, uh, when we when we met, a lot of our conversations were based around music and uh, and video games. You know what I'm saying? Um, which 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 to me was like, okay, this person this person is, is somebody you know that that's that's similar. We have a even though you know. The, the 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 five year age gap. There's a lot of similar interests uh, in things. Um, um, you you also are a, a big gamer as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because it's it's more layers to you than just it than just art. It's a, it's a bunch of things. You know what I'm saying? We gonna we gonna we gonna crack into into all of that. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's get into the to the trying to think man it's so much because you, you also you also uh at one point was doing uh 
the Briggs been wild thing because I'm jumping around a little bit, but uh, this is this is part of your upbringing too. How old were you when you was doing the Briggs been wild? It's like early twenties. Okay, so this is still this is still finding. This is you at the, this is young man, fresh out in the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, because to me, bro, like you. People, the people watching have no idea what Briggs Ben Wild is, but Briggs Ben Wild is, is a stage name, and you know whether you know, it, it was a, it was a persona that you that you created, correct? Yeah, it was a uh, me, me and the homie were uh, were were making music in his in his in his room, uh huh, and um, we wanted to make like just almost parody parody trap music back then. You know, I, <laughs> Bricks Been Wild was just as like a, just like a, a goofy alias and almost like a persona to make that kind of. Thing. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It was like, 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 yeah. So, but the the thing is, in in listening to it, like, you actually could rap. Like, also her songs, like you, you know, you can actually rap, rap, which is crazy. That's why I'm like, it's so many layers to, to, to. Joe Joseph Sanchez, you know, um, how I'm gonna jump back into the art part too, but how did you get into like hip hop like that? Like I I don't know, I just I just feel like back then uh growing up, you just kinda had to have your foot in everything. Uh like as as many hands you had it in, 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 in every sub in every subgenre of the hip hop was well, better the better you know the more, the more you knew, the better when it came to hip hop like you know, mm. I feel that's kind of how I, I I saw it or I see it to this day too kind of like like I'm, I may not break dance but I at least I know, I know a couple of oh. the n- names of the pioneers or or people in it I, or I walk have an appreciation for it right, right you know. Right. Oh, yeah. It's more than just you know just eating off of it and like how certain um, certain uh, newer artists they they don't uh, they don't uh, like show love to the to the OGs and stuff you know or they don't know anything or they they don't really care to to do so you know. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so we 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 got we tapped into Briggs Ben Wild. We got uh, you growing up. You you uh got influence in graffiti from your uncles. Um, how was it? Um, you know the the challenging. What was uh what the most the challenging thing as a as a young man in graffiti? Like the challenging times because I see um. I see hit ups where, you know, there's a on the freeway overpass. It's like, damn. On one hand, I, you look at it like this motherfucker's stupid as fuck to do that shit. But on the other hand, it's like you got to have a certain certain set of cojones to get up there and a certain set of passion and like you live and die for this shit. Like you you have to be okay in in getting up on this this freeway overpass and like. I, I love this shit so much that if I die, if I fall off this shit and die, I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? So it's a different love or it, it's a passion in, in, in graffiti. Uh, what, what, have you ever hit anything challenging like that? Like some high shit where you was like, damn, man, like this shit is so unsafe. Like if, 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 if something happened right here, fuck it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Like anything crazy like that, or yo, you had a certain cut where you wouldn't do anything. Like I'm not getting on no overpass or nothing like that. Yeah, um, like I think they call they call like the freeway overpasses. They call those heavens. I've never done a heaven. Those are, those are I've, never, I've never been into heights. So, but uh, when I was younger, I did a couple a couple things that were pretty high up and. Uh, even those times, I was just like, "Nah, this is not, this is not me," you know. Mm-hmm. That was me going out of my comfort zone, or I was fucking on drugs, or under the influence of something, you know, like, right. un, like you know, liquid courage. But nah, nah, I was never no, nothing like that. But I, I, I from what I've seen, because I've known people who've done stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, 
I've people do it for different reasons, you know. Some people are influenced by the culture of it, like they want to just prove a point that they that that they can do a spot like that that's super that looks impossible to do and do it with style. Mm-hmm. And then you have people that just want to do it just to say they did it, you know. So it, it's like um so some people are like, you know, the end, the end the 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 goal is the same, you know, it's to be noticed. Mm-hmm. But within the culture of it, I think it's just like, you know, it's like a So so we we talked the other day about the the graffiti being the element of hip hop. It also moved like hip hop. Like there's people that's like that do it for the love, like underground type. And then there's people do it for the floss, mm-hmm. like the yeah. commercials like style. So that, that what you're saying, like people like, are yeah. the people that I just did it just to do it. Like that's more of the flashy type. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or is it a blurred line or a thin line between? There's definitely a thin line when you're doing it illegally, you know? Yeah. Like that's, that's the heart of it, you know? Cause you, because no matter what, it's illegal in the eyes of the law, you know? And uh, so I think like when people do it with, with intent and they, you can tell that that person is, is, is almost skilled in a way enough to, to not just get to that, that level, Mm -hmm. that height or whatever he's doing or she's doing, you know, could even be a train. Isn't, you know, I just feel like the, the level of respect that you have to have for yourself and, and the culture, it shows like in anything and like we're talking about like hip hop and like graffiti and 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 and, and rap mm-hmm. like or you know when you care enough for something you it shows you know right like, so like when you when when you see something that looks like it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't even have to be like a lot of colors you know right it doesn't even have to be the most uh, but some people i think they they need that they can they 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 were born with that, uh, with that idea that things need to be the most, uh, I guess, glamorized, you know, mm-hmm. because they know nothing else. But I think the the best the best type of, you know, I guess art, well, I guess I'm speaking on the idea of art, mm-hmm. you know, is just a uh, hip hop. I guess it's, it's the type that it makes you realize that you don't need a lot to do to do to make an impact, you know. Right. So I think that's what that's that's what graffiti in my in my in my overall assessment of like just <clears throat> graffiti relating to music mm-hmm. like that. I just think that it has that less is more kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Now, um, I, at the college, um, I can't think of his name is Mister. Uh, not I think his name is Mister B, not Mister Bay. Man. Whatever it is. Um, um, I had asked him one time, like, hey, you in this department with the movies and X, Y, Z, you know, what cameras, you know, should I use for this is what I'm doing? And he's like, use what you got. And it was like the sim- the most simplest uh, reply or, you know, answer that I needed. Use what you got. I'm like, what? And I had so much shit already at that time. Yeah, like I'm, I'm fucking up. Like I got, I got, I got this shit already. Like what am I doing? And then I start pe- piecing shit together. You know what I mean? So it's um, I get, I get that that aspect. Like, um, so um, let let's talk about why uh, graffiti is so frowned upon. Uh, the history of it. Um, to to some or to the, to the to the masses, you know what I'm saying? Like people that's born around it or in it, we understand. Like, oh yeah, we know what it is. But for the masses, and you know, it's we know it's illegal, or whatnot. Um, is it? Do you feel me personally? But I want I want to know your answer. Me personally, I feel like it's it's frowned upon because of how it's done. Sometimes, like you know, like tagging on the church. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, tagging on the apartment building that's that's still being lived in. Like I understand a non-lived in apartment. You know what I'm saying? And I may be wrong. This is just this is just me. I understand a not a, you know a bando or non-lived in joint tagging that shit up crazy. You know what I'm saying? But the actual living in kids running around all that. Um, 
in certain places, I I feel like that's why it is frowned upon and illegal because, well, for one, because it's just damaging, quote unquote, damaging other people's property. But it's just sometimes how it's done. Like, you know, I wouldn't, if I was, if I was doing graffiti, I wouldn't do it on no church. You know what I'm saying? But why you feel in, in your own aspect or why you feel that it's, it's been so frowned upon, the history of it's been so frowned upon by the masses? I think uh, that's like a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to be precise in this answer. Graffiti has always been the, the voice of the unheard. The whether whether that and I'm not even just talking about letters or like hip hop. It's like it's a cult, it's a politically cultural thing for people to write on the walls their 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 their, their problems mm-hmm. with society. Mm-hmm. You know. So I think when I when I'm when when I when I re- when I think about my relationship to it, I see how. It made it gave me a voice. It sounds super cliche. It gave me a voice mm-hmm. and a way to express myself when there was another another f- way I thought there was. When, no, when I felt like there was no other option. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like that's how I feel. I, I found my love for for hip hop was because I almost felt like I appreciated what it came with. Like the art came with the sound and the and the culture and the look. So I think graffiti, when we think about it, like when I think about it and I think about like the subway art of the seventies and like New York and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think that to this day, man, if, if so, for some people it's like, if they're not doing that, if they're not doing graffiti, they're going to be doing something maybe twice as worse, you know, mm-hmm. like they could be doing something violent or right. stealing or, they gang could, gang banging or something crazy. They could be actually all of the above, you know. Living out these thoughts that they the voices that are, you know, the you say graffiti is the voice of the voiceless. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So these actions that they're putting into the art can be yeah, they can be way more damaging yeah. in society. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So but when when I relate it to hip hop, the reason why it's so frowned upon is because the people that were doing it in the seventies were you know, yeah, they, they 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 took it from the subways to the streets. Once once they start once they started getting stricter on the on the trains, see, right? Mm-hmm. So it was only natural for them for for it to 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 grow, you know, onto the streets. But it couldn't be contained in the, in the trains no more, you know. So like, I feel like it's necessary. Like it's a necessary. It's almost like uh, I heard uh, there's, there's a guy who said. Uh, artist named Chaz, Chaz, super famous art artist from LA. He said, uh, if, if you follow graffiti in any, in any part of the world, they'll show you where it's hurt. Mm. Interesting. You know, follow the graffiti and the place with the most graffiti is the place that's most infected, the most hurt. That's, that's, that's. And it, it goes back to that, uh, broken, uh, we heard of the, the the broken the broken window theory. No, it's that one. It's um, if you if you break a window in, in any place and and you and you and you repair it as soon as it breaks, it shows that you care. But you break a window and you leave it, or, you know, mm. leave it broken. Next thing you know, you have two broken windows, and then you have graffiti, and then you have this, this, and that. Well, so yeah. so I feel like. I feel like graffiti and hip hop. What's crazy now is I feel like you know they they just celebrated fifty years of hip hop, mm-hmm. and you know so it's such a, it's such a big business. But the people who make the most money from it, or the, the people who have who really have a voice in this shit, mm-hmm. they don't come up with some kind of. They, it's about time they come up with some kind of like rule book. I feel like some kind of like charter, some kind of declaration. Mm-hmm. Because it's getting out of hand of where people take this shit and, and and profit from it, you know. And that goes back to the what you're talking about the mainstream and underground shit. Like some people, some people think it's selling out to 
be mainstream. But I think it's to the point now where people need to talk about their love for this shit, you know, because mm-hmm. it's getting crazy. Um, the what you said, uh, you follow the is you follow the graffiti, you follow the hurt. That's that's I never heard that. That's that's crazy. That's Chaz. That's Chaz. I can't take credit. That's Chaz. Yeah. That's that so he said something like that. So yeah. That quote I never heard that shit. So like that, um, and that's true because you know you don't see this in certain neighborhoods or you know certain areas. You know you may it may be some wild motherfucker just some some random hit up somewhere. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, like, how how much graffiti are you seeing in Beverly Hills? Or how much graffiti are you seeing in Malibu and Palace Verdes and all these different places? You know what I mean? Like, it's just certain places you're not going to see it, but you, you come closer to where people are hurting. People are, are starving. People living on the streets. Well, I'm pretty sure there's people living on the streets everywhere, but, you know, these, these homeless encampments out here, like, you know, um, it's a lot of streets out here you can't turn on without, you know, these these uh, campers, these broke down campers and shit. And, you know, so a lot of people, you know, a lot of people seeing this damage in the neighborhood or bringing down the value. But like you said, it could be worse. They could be, they could, I'd rather them bring down the property value than raise the crime, the, the, you know, the crime rate or the murder rate. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you under that much uh, stress and um, you have something growing in you where you feel like you want to hurt people or you want to go there, I really rather you just bring down the property value and then then raise the murder rate. You know what I'm saying? So I understand. Like it, that's a, to me in society, that's a fair trade off. Like fuck it. Like fuck you. Like wh- how whatever they feel, that's gonna bring it the property value down. Just wait a few more years. Whatever you want it to be, your property is going to be that. You know what I mean? So, um, I never even I never looked at graffiti like, you know, certain places I look like, damn, that should look crazy right there. Like the fish spot around the corner. I don't know if it was a hit up when you when you passed through. Yeah, it was. you know, I, it's been known to have just crazy, just crazy yeah. hit ups and like they just yeah. That spot looks that spot looks crazy because it looks like a straight establishment, almost like a, a landmark or. And it's just like, yeah, but you know, it's like how, how how do you how do you gauge or how do you uh, how do you measure uh, criminal criminality on the on the scale of like, <laughs> you know, like how do you make how do you tell somebody, hey man, like if you're gonna hit up, don't hit up over here, like, yeah, you know, yeah, you can't uh, you can't say shit like that, hey, but oh, they they did that before, and yeah, I, they, yeah, they did, they did, and, uh, like uh, yeah, that's a spot, dog, like you know, but hey, it's different now, you know. Yeah, it's different, bro. Um, we gonna we uh, sign of the times, man. Like that, that saying the writing's on the wall. It's so it's so true, bro. Literally, you see shit, man. You're like, what the fuck? Like a couple years ago, I was driving through downtown, and uh, I'm like, it's fucking smoked out. And sure enough, someone wrote that on the wall. Smoked out the game. I was like, this <laughs> shit is <laughs> what? <laughs> so, that that that's. Yeah, me he, and Rod he, he wrote his feelings out. Me and Rod Inc. saw it. Like, I'm like, look, nah. It said smoked out the game. And they didn't even say no one's name. It just said that it smoked out the game. Because let you know, this is this yeah. is, is this is here. It, yeah. it, it's like uh it was a telltale. I feel like we're in a smoked out the game era right now. Like 2000s was bling bling. It was um, 2010s. 2010s was like social media, and then now it's just smoked out. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's fucked up. They laughing, but that's fucked up. We in the smoked out air. Damn, y'all, we in the smoked out air. But but it, it clears up at the end. But right now, it's when the smoke sh- clears, right, everything could be yeah. great. Yeah, it's smoked out right now though. Um, like up and smoke, up and smoke tour was tight. Like that shit was weeded up. Music was cool, but right now it's just like people just smoked out. Like not literally, or well, they are, but you know, like. Social media got people smoked up. Yeah, you know, that's a whole different thing where people are actually <laughs> smoking out on social media. Like, not even. <laughs> I'm not saying we like it's, <laughs> it's people. It's people hitting pookies on social media. 
is people <laughs> popping crazy pills on social media. Yeah. Fucking uh, rest, hey, rest in peace, little Pete. Can it, I tell you something? One of my home, remember I was telling you my homie that, that I was into um that dark shit I was telling you about. Yeah, yeah. That fool when he started going down bad, like yeah. in, when when social media first came out, he was he was putting that shit on blast, like on. on so I'm like this. I'm like okay, this is the most smoked out shit I've ever seen. Like you know, he was like the first dude to do that. Like like on camera. Yeah, like posted on the, in, on the internet. I'm like this can't be real. Po- Ew, pookie. Yeah. Nah, yeah, and like on, now man. it's like now you now you can now you can go viral nah, doing that shit. You can't. That, you can go that, viral hitting insane. the pokey now. That's crazy. You you can you can literally uh, you can have a actually you know what you know what Joe, I'm gonna try and get a show. I know somebody. Just hit the pookie, dog, and you're gonna go viral. Nah, people already think <laughs> I'm hitting the pookie now because I lost weight. So you're like hey, you smoking the pookie. Uh, uh, <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> um, but um, I know somebody who have a like YouTube channel where that's like the main thing. Like, just hitting the pookie, he smokes the pookie, pookie review, poop the pook, the pookie plush. I'm gonna bring him on here. Hey, shout out to you, man. Well, I'm, I'm gonna try and get you on here in the future, man. Um, we got a lot, we're gonna have a lot to talk about with that guy, too. Um, but uh, so we in the smoked out air. Um, let's see. We went we went through uh the hit ups. Um, so now um let's fast forward. I'm trying to think. Um now with with graffiti, how did are there are there renegade graffiti artists? Or is it like everybody that does graffiti is a is a part of a crew at some point somewhere? I feel like um, now, like just to do it, you're a part of it now. It wasn't always like that. Mm. Like people were like, "Nah, we're not flying for that." Even in even now, you can still see it. Like that shit is. So, but no, for the most part, no, man. Like people people get into crews, and then some people are what they call oneers. Mm-hmm. You know, oneers. And that's why when you're that's where that. Term one comes from SW one, you know. Oh, okay. You're by yourself, yeah. Yeah. KRS one. Yeah. You know, but then back then people would use their names and break it, break their names down to like acronyms. You know, I always thought that was cool too. Um, like, there's a, a dude in New York who writes EM Ultra Magnetic. You know, mm-hmm. there's stuff like that that's really old school that comes from like that subway subway era, like super super fantastic Dave. Like, so I think like there's people that paint graffiti like that to this day, like. Like they were, that's into their in their hearts is that the essence is to be funky and fresh and fun and the spirit of hip hop is in their name. Mm-hmm. Like there's a dude who writes Hot Carl, you know? Hot Carl. Yeah, there's that guy I told you who wrote, wrote Trey, mm-hmm. Treyski, you know, and always kept it funky and big. So I think even when uh, I would do it, when I used to, you know, used to do it, mm-hmm. I I try to keep that 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 tradition alive. And a lot of people just do it now. Like I said, it's like a smoked out now where their main objective is to just be done mm-hmm. and, and post it. No and longer. Post it. Yeah. Okay. There's no longer no, uh, right. it's, it's, it's content, right? It's content now. I mean, but <clears throat> almost I'm, like, it's almost like now to, 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 to say you, in my eyes, like to say you do it, it's kind of like you have to, uh, Put a little bit more heart into it, you know. I mean, but that was the thing. Like me growing up in in my era, like graffiti, like it was. Even though there wasn't social media, but it wasn't. You didn't used to meet people and just be like, "Oh, that's good." You'll meet them like, "Oh shit, that's you." Like you know, what I'm saying it wasn't mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, I'm I'm big, I'm big badass." Woo-dee, woo woo. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was like, "Oh shit," you know what I'm yeah. saying? It. it it kept that situation like um it just kept that 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 hidden that's what it was about it was that mask that 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 voiceless person being able it was like a, a just creating a persona almost like mm-hmm. like and it let me ask you in, in creating these these names are they given or is it like you take on is it like uh people with rap names or stage names like it's like they come up with it like this is it <clears throat> how that works um i think i think the, 
yeah the, you you come up with it mm -hmm. and you just run with it but um people change their names in the beginning i changed my name a couple of times but it was because uh what i was writing at the time felt easier to do yeah. and i told myself that uh, that's, a, that's a cop out you know i gotta i gotta stick to this name because this name sounds better and uh, let's figure it out um, but um yeah and then, and that in that sense too, you always want you back then. You always wanted to have a different name, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, people were coming up with all kinds of names that didn't even make any sense. Like, um, I'm speaking for myself. I, I never I never liked it when people would call the come up with names that just kind of like degrade themselves, like idiot or like fuck. I'm sorry, anyone who writes idiot, sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. or like anybody, you know, like oh. I write. I write doofus. Yeah, I, shit here. I write yeah. fucking caca face. Like what? Like what the, what the <laughs> fuck? There's just people okay. now. There's people now that make it a thing now. Like that. That write things like vulgar like that. Yeah. And that's cool, I guess. If that gets your rocks off, but I like names that are like unique and make you think. Like whoa. Like damn. Like my. <laughs> you say their names like whoa. Oh, like shit. yeah, damn. Like why I didn't think of that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. Now I don't, I don't want you to speak on your your name name that you can you speak on your past names mm. or, or you can't speak on them either because it's like the hidden no no no, no. I I I, <laughs> I, remember I used to write uh I used to write tuna and I used to write shush tuna like just like tuna can of tuna or, yeah yeah okay. those were my first names like when I started experimenting with the actual spray can. Um, cause I've always drawn letters. Like I said, like my uncles put me on young. I think that's, that gave me a leg up mm -hmm. and, and then that's kind of too, where I started, I, I, I think because I was so aware of, of, of graffiti at a young age, it made me aware of so many other things like by, by default. Cause mm -hmm. I was, I was keeping up with the, the culture, like the magazines and shit like that and like videos and mm -hmm. music videos and shit, whatever. So when I was in high school, dog, it was a wrap because I was seeing a bunch of, what you would call like you know posers now, but they don't say that uh, shit no more. Yeah, fools, yeah. Fools that had like graffiti on their backpack, people that were like rapping and they sucked, and it's like, dude, like. But anyways, like they they played the part, like they it's like a, uh, it's like a motherfucker going to the uh to the to the blacktop. Dudes what? had dudes had backpacks and all kinds of looks, but imagine the much so that it's equivalent to a dude going to the blacktop or park. You know, at the park playing basketball with 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 the full Laker uniform on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the sweat the sweat band, sweat band. You know, yeah, yeah, that kind of that kind of activities. But you know, it just I think I think when when people and like I said, like that whole it goes back to the whole Christian thing. You know, I was because I was still I was still I'm always, I'm still the same person, dog. Like it's crazy. Like I think about it now, like it taught me a lot about. Never, I never dressed apart, man. I never dressed apart, mm -hmm. you know, because what is the, the best writers and the best people who I always meet, they never look like anything that you in your mind would look like, you know, right? But that, anything like this motherfucker is a, a world class fucking gymnast, like, mm -hmm. wow, you know, mind blown up. But okay, so let, <clears throat> um. Let me see. Um, so now let's get into the part of uh, um, I don't know if uh, if you could speak like um, let me see this angle of like what does it mean to be a part of like a crew uh, 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 like a graffiti crew like um, you hear gangs they say I went to gang you know I joined yeah. a gang for because they like family and protection like what's the is is it is it because is it uh like just to feel like this is it like wh what is the purpose and feeling of joining a graffiti crew um some crews exclusivity uh, uh ex ex some is that exclusiveness is that a word just some that people some more exclusive than yeah, others. Yeah, some some crews are more exclusive than others. And to some people, graffiti's in and like and anything, people some people have alter alternative motives where it comes to this shit. Like um in in my case, I I try not to like I said, I take the less is more approach. Yeah. You know? 
I can't, you know, my situation, I can't, I can't be, I can't be out there like that, you know? All right. I think if I had less responsibilities, I probably would, to be honest. Mm. Um, um, because I like that shit, you know, that's just, that's just fun, bro. That's just, it's it, it real graffiti. Like I said, like we talked about, um, it being like the voice of the people, dog, like the voice mm-hmm. of the unheard. Yeah. Like that shit also has like this power to to change people's perspective. So so crazy, dog. Like you can really open up people's minds with it like if you really use it. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, dog. Like, um, what was the question again? I'm sorry, no, nah, you good, you good, bro. It, it what was the oh the cruise the cruise okay yeah, so nah, it's, it's all so, good so, content. Don't so trip. back in the day, from what I from what I understand in the '90s, and like I, I talk about it like that's back back in the day, but in the '90s, like. Hip hop was more like the more you knew, the better, right? Mm-hmm. Like, damn, I do break dance. That dude freaking he MCs, he does graffiti, and he's nice with it. Damn, and he's a cool person, and he beats you up too. Damn, you know, like, you know, and he was cool with you. Oh yeah, don't yeah. get him mad, but you know, like, like that shit. Like, I feel like there was a different principle, at least in my you know my eyes. So, <clears throat> in my eyes, like a crew. Sometimes was it, it? It consisted of not even just graffiti writers. It consisted of just people that were just like in the scene, you know. And for the most part, they were your mentors. You know, they were the people that that were going to show you the ropes. Right. Not even just graffiti wise, but maybe financially, mm-hmm. put you onto something. Uh, show you a different way of looking at life, even like you know. So the so. Getting in the right crew can be beneficial yeah. to you, not just graffiti wise, but in life in general. Like certain, like big, like having, like uh, well, I can't even say uh, like in games because I'm not gonna do that. So more just having like a, a big homie in life, not in the gang sense, but like just having somebody older than you showing you the ropes. You know, hey, doing like this yeah. and like doing like that, it could be real beneficial, not just in graffiti wise, but life, maybe yeah. you know. Cause it, it gets it gets very it gets very diff like uh, difficult if you think about it. Like, say you say I was a, I'm in no crew, but mm-hmm. say I had a crew, right? Mm-hmm. So my 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 objective for my crew is be may may differ from someone else's objective. Some 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 other crews want to just maybe go crazy and just be up everywhere in the world. They want to be up everywhere, literally in the world. Yeah. Some people just want to do nice murals. And associate themselves with other artists that just want the same, you know. So it's all about what crew, you know. There's certain crews that don't even paint a lot, but when they come together, they do amazing things. Right. You know, you don't see them. You don't see them do a lot of graffiti, but when they do, it's kind of calculated, you know. And it, and it, and it's and almost in a way, it's classy, you know, mm-hmm. because they 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 uh, they add to their environment. You know, they don't take away. Right. It's, it's, it's yeah. more masterpieces happen that way. Um, <clears throat> um, now, in in graffiti, you know, um, and I keep tying, you know, I keep saying it, you know, for those that, because a lot of people don't know graffiti is an element of hip hop, you know, and it, it's a like so much of hip hop, you know, um, with graffiti comes uh street people or you know gangs or um now in your era you know I don't know how much you can speak for eras before you but in your era um how much did the gang culture or street culture let's just say street culture how much did the street culture affect the graffiti part Cause we see, you know, how um, in hip hop, a lot of people who have one foot in the street, one foot in the game, a lot of them don't. It don't end well for others, or it's always, you know, something, some setback, or a backslide, or whatever the case. Uh, did it, or if it did, like, did it mess up the graffiti game a little bit, or to none? Um, the whole gang, the whole street and gang culture. Um, I feel like it. It had its its height in the in the late two, in the late in my eyes, 
even it affected my family too. Like it turned from graffiti to like, you know, tag banging. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and then from, from what I heard, you know, to even be a tagger in those times, it was like, it was a no go, like in jail, like in jail, you couldn't, I don't know how it is now. I can't speak on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, just, just, just your, your, uh, like, like it was like, dangerous to be like a graffiti artist you know like you didn't want to go to jail under those circumstances you know right um oh because like if 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 you went in jail like, it was almost like you you're not from a hood you're just tagging and shit yeah you know um so yeah that's crazy i had a fr- i had a friend you know do some some serious time and there was an issue you know this was like in 2000 and like seven 2008 mm-hmm the homie I told you I met at at a, at the job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that dude. Huh? It, it was an issue because of his, because he was in jail because he was no because he was in jail for graffiti, you know. And like they don't they're like you know, they look at that like that's not a oh okay like know? petty and some like yeah. they look look at you less than yeah yeah oh okay I see but um in in uh, yes yeah, it's, it's 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 just in L A I think you know the mm-hmm. culture you know was it's just you you writing on you're you're more bound to like you know like say like you're in like in LA you got to be careful you can't just be like in somebody's neighborhood like doing stuff like you know yeah it's crazy you know so I think it's just more like when I used to do like you stick to the freeways or the rooftops you know stuff out of out of their way you know mm-hmm. ways to do it you know but like what ends up happening is that. Crews that start off start off as graffiti crews, they get pressured from the neighborhood. You know, mm, like you can't be over here doing X or Y Z. Either you, you either you drop. I mean, those were those are certain words that you would hear. Like, maybe hey, those fools drop back in the day. They drop. Yeah, made those fools drop. What happened to that crew? Oh, man. oh like made oh. them drop their whole shit. Damn. Either you fools drop. Are you like, no. nah, damn. <laughs> damn. Hey, crews will get dropped. I remember hearing shit like, I fool ranked it. That was like, where'd you, where'd you hear? I fool ranked it. I fool, that whole crew got dropped. Nah. Uh, <laughs> right, explain to the people what rank me or what rank they mean. Explain to the people. What rank you, don't wanna, you don't want to be a ranker, man. That's, you know, ranker is somebody who is a, is like a Benedict, not a, a Benedict Arnold kind of like uh-uh. somebody who, who you turn around, your boy gone. Like oh, what? Okay. Oh, oh hey, oh, I want to go get help. Oh, okay. Nah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I know a certain somebody who yeah. who uh, ranked it on me uh, when we was in the ninth grade. You know who you are. It was going down. He had my back. We was right there. I turned around. The classroom door closes. I'm like, ah, I don't go into class. Nah, but yeah. that's a debate me and my boy always have. Shout out to him. Shout out to Biz, man. Uh, <clears throat> um, so, the, so it kind of it made it kind of made uh, the, the the street culture kind of made certain crews get down or lay down type situation. Like, yeah, yeah, like uh, like yeah. Hey, there's a time and a place to rank it, though. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so sometimes you rank it and just be like, "Fuck it, that friendship one is a shit." I'll, I'll be a ranker. <laughs> <laughs> not not to be confused with wanker. So yeah. ranker. Um, no, 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 no wanker. <laughs> um so yeah, so the so the street the street thing, um how you ever been you ever been arrested for your doings in in, in, in the graffiti culture? Or no, I don't know, man. Or had anybody do like some serious time like like years, like it can't you get years for doing graffiti? Yeah, definitely, bro. He could definitely shit no joke, bro. <clears throat> That's why it's like it's crazy, bro. I don't want to. I don't want to. Sometimes I, I'm like, man, I don't want to speak on shit because that should be coming true. No, oh, man. But like, I, I think about like the future, like, yeah, man. Careful, man. This shit is crazy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? Go ahead, dog. What you what you speaking, dog? I was just thinking like how how now people like you know they're so they flex, you know. Mm-hmm. So graffiti became a big flex on social media. So like you have writers with their whole names on there, like their accounts, and like, you know, 
like the, their actual the whole their whole account is their name and their activity and their stories and it's, just, it's a different time like I'm thinking what if the future is like remember in fucking 20 so and so you had this and that and mm. you're like 70 and like <laughs> so you're doing time for some old ass shit that you didn't do <laughs> you're getting arrested and shit hey, that, hey that's crazy so uh, damn so yeah. that, that's like in the street culture too bro like uh um, you have you have gang members on social media. You have gang members following other gang members that's rivals. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's how people know who everybody is. You have other people uh, fake accounts as women, and it's, it's all kind of crazy stuff out here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It just seems like everything is cool until you know politics come around it's just, and it's smoke, it smoked out smoked out era and this ai and ai now smoked Wait, out smoke, and AI. oh man smoked out air sidebar um man yeah that ai situation is crazy um i, I was gonna speak on it on uh on the the pilot episode um but you know to me personally, I feel like that mess is here to finish the job of, or help finish the job of the yeah. hu- humanity. Um, what what I personally think is that this AI, if it's not if it's not used carefully, which I'm pretty sure it's not like everything else, it will finish us off like our brain. Like we will get used to doing nothing like we can have we can, you can go to school like you can be a fucking doc go to school to doc be a doctor or something or something important and have to write a fucking 15 30 page uh, uh essay or whatever the hell they call them and you can have this ai do it you know what i'm saying and and that's that could you imagine we in a world where doc our our next doctors and lawyers and xyz they're not even putting in the work you know what I'm saying it's enough, like the, maybe the uh, the uh, you know the lab part or whatever, but the the typing, like how much are we, how much are they actually knowing what's going on if there's an AI doing everything? You know what I mean? But that's a whole nother situation, fuck. Um, um, but if you like everything else, bro, if it's used correctly, it'll be fine. I have ways that I'm gonna look into it to use it, but not for anything else but that specific thing. You know what I mean? Um so so you uh at one at one point at one point uh in 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 life you were a part of a crew. Um and how challenging was that being uh a, a part of a crew and becoming a because because you're you, in 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 graffiti you're in this you're growing in it as a child you put it in uh or a teenager you put in all this work in years and years so there are some adjustment issues personally you have to have um just becoming a man and having because you know you you have you have a daughter and, and a wife you know you're married now you know so um beautiful family and it, there has to be some adjustment issues, you know, adjusting from that to that. Was was there any adjustment issues or you just woke up one day and was like, you know what? I have to, you know, choose X, Y, Z. Or I have to choose this because not not only because of age and because of family. Like, you know, at certain, at certain points, this is just me. I would think like you to put yourself on a line, like to explain to your daughter why, you had to go to the police because you were spraying on the wall or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? You, you hitting up, you hitting up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like how was that adjustment or, you know, just going from, uh, the life of, a? cause to me, I feel like you more than a tagger. You're not no tagger. Well, like, what's the proper name for it? Cause it's not a tagger. You in graffiti. Like what is the proper name for it? But, but I think, uh, cause you're not, cause you am- way more. Am- amongst the initiated, it's a writer. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, because you you do you you know a tagger to me is just somebody just do some crazy yeah. shit like you. Yeah, so it's like it's like it's, like, it's crazy. It's like calling someone a rapper, like, Are you a rapper. Yeah, yeah it's like, 
but yeah. it's so many levels yeah. of that. You know, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to get yeah. nothing confused. Like, that's why I'm like, I'm not about to call you no tagger. <laughs> you know, you yeah. so far from a tagger. Um, um, so the adjustment, <laughs> what's the adjustment of, um, Coming from the uh, 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 street, what is it? Street writer, street. I don't know. Uh, a writer, a writer, a, a graffiti writer. Yeah. What would it be coming from? Uh, adjusting from a graffiti writer to like, okay. Some people don't grow out of it, man. That's mm. that's just crazy. That's just uh, but to, man, like, if you, I think people have a hard time letting letting themselves go. A lot of people that get into graffiti. Mm. A lot of people get into graffiti. <laughs> Because they, they're looking for themselves. So for you to let yourself go, it's hard, man. You know? Mm. It's an adjustment. I still adjust with it, bro. Right. I, I still fucking slip up and, and I relapse. You know? And it's not good from for my for my situation. Yeah. So it's just like a learning process, man. And, you know, like, it's like a, unlearning a lot of a lot of habits. And uh, when it comes to cruise, I think um, it, could be, it could be beneficial for any, depending on your situation, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, and every crew, every crew is different and, and, and moves different. But I think also too, the, the downfall of a crew can be the tribalism, you know, mm. because uh, I, re- I recently heard someone say like, uh, you know, uh, put someone in, you know, you put someone by themselves, they'll speak, they'll speak their mind and you put someone with the group, they're going to speak for the group. Mm. You know, so. What's, you know, so sometimes uh, traditions could unify, could unify some soldiers, but sometimes those soldiers will just take orders, man. Mm. Like I'm just doing my job. Like nah. Yeah, like I'm just doing this. Is what it is. Like, 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 so we're not gonna, we're not gonna adapt, and we're not gonna evolve. We're just gonna, you know, crash dummies, like crash. Dummies. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so there's a adjustment thing now. Let's talk about you. Going from a graffiti writer um, into you know you you got uh, like I say you have a, a, a beautiful family um, now you're you're the adjustment from gra- graffiti writer to taking care of the family like you took that and you made your God given talents into what we know now as the the lost pets. Uh, is it Lost Pets Cold? Because I seen on 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 the Instagram sure. say Lost Pets and Sun. It's or is it? Is it's it, just I'm telling you, I, I'm just so it's just an entity. It's just an entity right now. Okay, so you, it's up in the air. So you, but you you're taking it and you made that into you making logos for people. Like for me, yeah. you know, what I'm saying for those that maybe just tapping in, uh, this is Joseph Sanchez, uh, the the creator of the Townhouse Media logo. Um, the seriously not another podcast logo, the original uh, 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 cat versus dog logo. Uh, what else? Sports for you logo. The uh, and the no rules logo. Um, also the the uh, the Roosevelt show logo and a list of other uh, uh, um, uh, list of other clothing lines and other companies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, shoot. you want you want to you want to wrap it up? You got you got to take that oh, call. Oh, I can't oh, even oh, oh, the phone locked up. It's there cool. You. My bad. Um, all right. Um, so, um, you have you 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 creating things with this God given talent, and <clears throat> like you said, some people some people not able to make it out of that. You know, because you know. I see people my age that are still gang banging in the street or still doing stuff that that is hard for them, and it's it's a tough sight to see. Like, um, you know, um, what do you think? Besides, like, was the your family the driving force to have you? Like, okay, this is what it is, or was it was it just like uh, just maturity, or was it a little bit of both? Like, what was it to be like? Hey, I gotta get it. I have to do something different because this, this is this is costing me more than you know. This is costing me more than it's affording me. You know, it's like then then I can afford. Like it, I can I can potentially go. I can go to jail 
over this instead of make money. Like there comes a fork in the road for everybody. You know, some people don't get there, but that fork for you, what was that driving force like? I, I, for me, it was um, definitely my family, but also seeing the outcomes of my friends' lifestyles. You know, mm-hmm. when people start to just, when you, when, when you start to like revolve your whole life around one thing, it, it could become you know, so, so one-sided, you know? Mm-hmm. So I saw a lot of my friends just, make bad decisions and I was uh able just to steer myself to a different area dude because you know I had my own shortcomings too Mm -hmm. so like I just didn't want to keep making the same mistakes as my friends or even the ones I had made before in the past and uh even now like um I think I just uh I try to just if it feels if it feels if it feels safe or okay, mm-hmm. then I'm, um, you know, I think over time, I just kind of got like a sixth sense for it now, like where, you know, you know, nothing is ever safe when it comes to painting illegally, but I just try to make it more about, you know, either commission, commission walls or, you know, All right. I try to find, I try to find the, the same, the same value in it now, and it's almost like a. Le- it's like I said, it's a, it's a learning process because there's nothing like painting painting something that you find out in the wild, man. You know, mm-hmm. just painting something nice from your own mind, and you're trying to do, and you're trying to do something nice for someone else, not just yourself. Where do you see the graffiti game going from here on out? Like post smoked out air. I think it's gonna get more smoked out. To be honest, bro, I think it's just gonna get more smoked out, and then you're gonna have just like classic. Like it's gonna be classical. Mm. You know, like damn man, like that's. Just, People are gonna be like, that looks that sounds really beautiful, but it looks it looks really hard to do. No, oh, okay. I'm just gonna do this because it's cool and it's colorful. It's like, nah, dude. Mm. This thing's about this thing's about letters and style and incorporating like your your life perspective into letters, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So there's people that can do like monster letters, there's people that can do 3D underwater because their background of their love for nature puts their, you know what I'm saying? Now it's just like you have this, uh, this default, this default style. Is this what's going on? Like, oh, oh yeah. It's like the starter kit. Yeah. The starter kit. It's like yeah. the, the creative player. That, yeah. Oh man. It's just creative player up. Like it's, <laughs> like, it's, it's like, oh, that's, that's a uh, Shaq face on top of, you know, Dwayne Wade head of it. Like it, like you've seen it before, like there's no original originality, you know. Uh, and I think now, you know, that's where, you know, the AI situation is going to take. Uh, oh, yeah. It's going to take society too. It's going to take a lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of uh, original stuff out. And it's going to, I hope, I hope it don't get to the point to where it's hard for people like yourself that, that, been putting years in with the with the with the hand that you was blessed with. We're gonna be we're gonna be the dudes like at the mall playing the piano. No, come on, man. We oh can't. wow, that's beautiful. That's so. T- <laughs> and then, and then, uh, oh, oh, that that go that go AI Mo, um, AI Mozart. They go to AI Mozart. Like, nah, come on, man. This 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 is generated. No, like 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 we're gonna be like the dude. The, like they're gonna hire people who still use their hands to be like the dude. The you know. The no. piano, like in the mall, like you're gonna be drawing for people, like, oh wow, that looks so cla- uh, classic. Like, nah. That that's where it's headed to. Yeah, bro. We're, we're they're they're making they're making the this life look outdated. You know, mm. like how when you listen to classical, it's like it's nice, but you can't be listening to this shit all day. Can't get jiggy to this shit. That's <laughs> crazy, man. And it it's sad that I I can go <clears throat> I can go sure. on line and say hey create me a picture of xyz this and that i want can i claim that 
I don't know yet. I got to look deep into that, but I hope it don't get to that point to where I can go. Me myself, a person that that can cannot draw, you know, a lick of nothing. I can draw maybe a bullshit house. I can still I can't draw too much better than I can draw in in in, in uh, uh, high school. You know what I'm saying? Like that's I don't try and draw too much. So I hope a person like me who have zero skills in drawing with my hand can't go purchase this AI situation and create, hey, I want Super Mario with a busted kneecap dunking on somebody X, Y, Z, and then here we go here. Bam. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I can create that and put that out and copyright it and call it mine and be called art. Like, I'll be be MC Gusto at that point. You know what I'm saying? That's CB4 type stuff. Like, and it's a slap in the face to, you know, the super OGs. And then it's a slap in the face to the people like you who really take this art and graffiti thing super duper serious. You know what I mean? And that it's a lifestyle for y'all. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it's like with me and podcasting, like I'm okay with being here. And if I, you know, I'm here doing it dolo or if I'm here by myself, like I'm okay doing this shit and I don't get paid for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my passion. That's, I'm Mr. Passion over profits. I can sit here and just sit here and create because I'm comfortable. I'm in my zone. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you know, even when the podcast shit was situ- uh, situation was blowing up, everybody knew what it was. It's like, oh shit, you podcasting now. Like, bro, I've been podcasting since 2014. And people, you know, with, with a little bit before the uh, pandemic, a couple years before the pandemic, people just finally realizing what podcasting is. You know what I'm saying? So it could be people that's coming into the art and, and, and you know, graffiti game is like, oh, yeah, I do X, Y, Z. And it looked like something somebody else did with a twisted lid off or something, you mm-hmm. know? And it's just no originality, you know? It's not... And, and and that's even the thing of it of graffiti still running alongside of the hip hop situation. There's no originality in hip hop like that no more. So like, but when somebody hit, it's like, oh shit, that motherfucker. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know. So what I like, what I miss about the '90s was that everything was like, even if it was um, everything, everything was different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Songs were like parody songs or cover songs or you know um nothing was sounding the same you know so i think like now it's like you still see it you still see things that that get through the cracks like stuff that just like i said less is more and doesn't even have to be like overly produced or you know it just has to just look unique and just like mm-hmm. like an ind- at least has to look like a in- like individual thought you know yeah or a sound you know because I'm telling you, there's, there's definitely stuff out there. But there's nothing, that's what I'm saying. What's, what's crazy now is that these new sounds are coming out. These new ideas of uh, mm-hmm. of these new va- these new um, value systems of how, of how like, they, you know, we, we, we look at art and music. Like, if, like you said, like, if, if you are able to just mm-hmm. make a masterpiece and I'm over here trying to paint my ass off mm-hmm. and people are like, more exposed to you it's like what does that say about my art you know right that's just crazy dude so exactly and it's like damn like and that could be that could put a dim on that like and i kind of feel like that's what the ai situation is doing on all levels is really dumbing down it's going to dumb down the individual you know we it may not hit everybody in our lifetime you know, mm-hmm. but maybe by, you know, time your your grandchildren are running around, you know what I'm saying, or their kid, your great greats, it may be to a point to where, you know, it's just nothing. They're just everything is here. Like we, you know, some a lot of us, you know, with the, the door dashes situations, those come in a clutch because sometimes we get too tired of work and we want food there, but it's actually doing more damage financially. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just too dog ass tired. You know, for me, sometimes I come in, I don't want to go grocery shopping. So I have Walmart here. You know what I'm saying? Just the accessibility for a lot of things for us is as a society is slowing us down when we think it's speeding us up. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully the AI situation 
don't get to that part. You know what I'm saying? It's it's just that technology makes the 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 perception of time look more convenient when it's really not. Mm. Like things take time, man. You know, everything takes time. So I think the idea of of technology and time is is, is, is they're trying to push the idea like come on board we're gonna save you time it's like no you're saving me fucking to go but to go where but i'm saying like maybe what if life is just about you being in the moment you know like i got shit i gotta go do that like i mean some things like yeah you can you can you can make more convenient right mm-hmm. but some things I think it's necessary. It's making you know what I mean. Technology is making us not want to interact with one another. Straight up, it's not. It's not making us want to be able to tolerate one another. Facts. Straight up, we could tolerate the screen and we could tolerate the heart uh, like on Instagram or whatever. Mm-hmm. But you know, just don't do it. In, don't do it in person. Mm. You know, it, it, it's uh, creating the separation. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Disassociation of the intimacy, bro. Intimacy is different. Yeah, you, you you know, it's run. Yeah, it, it yeah. Intimacy is most definitely. You know? Yeah, it's 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 on it's on the ass end. It's almost uh on on the ass end running out. Um, <clears throat> that's creative, man. Um, well, maybe that goes back to the whole hip hop thing. Hip hop used to be like. Uh, Passed down, you know. Now it's like internet's passing it down, you know. Mm. Um, damn, that's a trip. Um, I n- I never thought of it that way. And it seemed like every time we we almost move forward in society, there's something that we we take two steps forward and something there to set us back like two and a half steps back. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not really we're not really moving forward that much. Like, you know, I would think we grow with technology or, you know what I'm saying? There's people nowadays, right now, that um that it's hard for them to, to, to do a simple task like of ordering like a situation off of uh a situation off of um like this online order or anything like that. Like anything that we can sit here in the palm of our hand and order. Mm-hmm. Like certain people at a certain age that can't do that. You know what I mean? So, you know, man, it's a trip. Um I think uh also with the age of of uh technology, you know, it it it, it helps so much, but it do so much more damage, bro. It do so much more damage. Um but uh any any before we before we get out of here, what's the outcome of like is there is there what what's been the the top outcome of coming from that background? Like what's been that uh like the peak of graffiti? Like is there like with 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 uh because it, it it's I would say coming from the streets like yeah um, you know, if you selling drugs, you can't be like a a super duper, you know, uh, drug kingpin. But you also got to understand, man. Like, there's some downfalls to it, and I think a lot of people that hop in it are not aware of the issues of, it, especially like to, in today's time. Like, there's a lot of people jumping into to gangs and stuff and saying stuff and not fully aware of the situation at hand and what they getting into. You know what I'm saying? Uh, A lot of people look at the graffiti thing like, oh yeah, it's dope, but they're not aware of. There's people getting killed over this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, It's real, you know, it can get real in the field at times. You know what I'm saying? And it's, you know, um, I think, I think for people that's, that's, uh, that's watching, that's watching this, you know, that's, Coming from that angle of getting into it, what would you tell somebody? It may be a younger person, maybe somebody that's that's of age, 
uh, that may be getting it, that don't want to get, you know, having a hard time expressing themselves on these walls or, you know, they the younger kid is sitting there waiting, they jumping into it. What would you say to a younger you, matter of fact, getting into that space? Like, is it, is it cautions of X, Y, Z? What would you tell a younger you getting into the, the you know, the graffiti game? Um... Man, I would just uh I think I would I wouldn't really change I would I wouldn't I would, that's a crazy question. Mm-hmm. But even if you wouldn't change anything, that's cool too, but Yeah, I wouldn't change would you anything. Tell anything. Look out for or anything. Oh man, because I think I was just I was I was really aware. That just sound crazy. I think I was just aware already, like what it was, what what what, I, what time it was when I was out there, you know, because there was there wasn't always good, you know. There was times where I ran into gangsters and cops and crackheads, all kinds of stuff, you know. So you understood the. Scene. I understood just yeah. Every time something bad happened, it was just like, fuck. I, I knew what I was getting myself into. So I think just so anybody who's who would want to get into it now. Mm-hmm. Without you asking anybody who wants to get into it, man, anybody who wants to get into it now, it's just, it's a it's a different, it's a lot more to worry about now. I think, in a weird way, like I don't see cops being as aggressive when it comes to trying to trying to capture, you know, people doing it. You know, they're still on the lookout, but they're not as vigilant about it. But now you just have more crackheads, you know, unpredictable people with mental health in areas that. A couple of years ago, there was no encampments. So a lot of these places that are encampments are probably like old graffiti stomping grounds. Now you go in there, now you have to worry about them. Mm-hmm. Gangsters are hitting you up. So it's almost like you develop a a sense of, of of respect because, you know, it's all about respect, you know, like, and space. Like, hey, look, uh, you don't know who I am. I don't know who you are. I may I might be in your hood. No disrespect. You know, like, as long as you're not disrespectful, for the most part, I think, for the most cases in my, in my situation, it's always worked out. But lately, mm-hmm. it's been kind of more cracked out, more, more wild wested out. So I think this is a sign of the times, man. You know, people are just more lawless, more people, you know. <clears throat> man, that's crazy. Yeah, because I feel like even that, bro, like that says something. People are more careless, more, more ruthless. So you know, I'm glad <laughs> I am glad I was able to experience it at a young age, though, because mm-hmm. uh, I had, you know, you had places to go and paint and, and, and socialize and run into other writers and, or, or 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 go to spots and 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 see people there already painting a masterpiece like oh shit right. you know and then you just I, I, you 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 out of respect what he even asked them what they wrote because you're the little homie you mm-hmm. know you're not the little homie about to go walk up to a wall with like seven people doing a masterpiece what do you guys write right yeah you know back up man what, yeah, the fuck some grown up shit going on here yeah back yeah up. that's yeah. that's the kind of you know yeah. Now it's like, hey, I'm in, I'm in. Uh, you know, you're blowing the spot you, up. Throwing like, rock, like you you're throwing rocks at the castle, dog. Get out of here, bro. <laughs> Going crazy. Um, <clears throat> trying to think, uh, cover anything. So you, 
So now you 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 also one thing before we get out you you, you covered you you took the the um, graffiti or graffiti writer uh, you transitioned that into like you doing things as far as logos and things now um, any uh, anything that you're setting right now any goal that you feel taking that part into the next level like your because uh, you know you you. The, graf- uh, the graffiti writer is, is is more hand, you know, or street. Now you get more into the digital situation. Like, are you well, you've been in it now, but now that you're in a digital situation, anything you want to get into that you you're not doing right now to further your your your, your brand and yeah, I want I want to paint more um, fine art, man. More mm-hmm. more uh, more more uh, pencil drawings and more inked inked comic book drawings, stuff like that. Mm. more illustration stuff so like uh like i'm it's almost like i feel like i'm like a if, if i might not be the the in karate or with every martial art or say karate for example mm-hmm. like you probably have um, you know x amount of black belts you know i feel like i'm like a black belt in that in the subculture of that like i may not be the nicest as far as like skill wise Mm -hmm. or the most the most um the dullest you're not the dullest like yeah i'm not the i'm not the the most i'm not the shiniest dude you know yeah and when it comes to that regard Mm -hmm. but i feel like because of what i witnessed as a kid Mm -hmm. and then experienced and then you know i've had i've I've lost friends who uh, you know who used to paint you know Mm-hmm. Whether it be through drugs or you know street life, I think I was just able to to grow faster, you know, mm-hmm. and be more aware of 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 what I was doing. Even if I even if I wasn't participating it at a young age, I was being molded to 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 do that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh. Any final words? Any uh, shout outs before we uh, get up out of here? Uh, shout out to my wife. Shout out to my kid. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you. Uh, shout out to you for having me. Oh, yeah. Most um, definitely. Shout out to God. Oh, you yeah. know. Shout Amen. out to God because I'm saying, like, if anything, if I could tell myself, like you said, if I could tell myself one thing to myself, was just uh, trust the process and you know know that everything's gonna be okay Woo. you know that's just crazy because there's times where i didn't think it was there's times where i wanted to stop painting man and but um stuck to it and uh always uh measured i always measured my attempts when it came to these things because you know mm-hmm. you gotta measure you gotta measure things that's it just measure things out well everybody this has been uh episode one the official episode one is going to be crazy because you're going to watch the uh, the pilot episode and there's going to be stuff different uh, here. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, uh, this right here, me and uh, my guy Joe, we set up a day to get here, get uh, be creative. I didn't write none of this down straight from the hip. You know what I'm saying? Hope you all enjoyed, uh, you know, uh, tune in at the, ben, uh, at the Real Being Ready on Instagram, everywhere. Just at the Real Being Ready anywhere. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You want to give out your drawing? You good. You good. Joseph yeah. Santa. Lost Pets Paint on Instagram. Follow me. I don't be posting much, but I'll start posting some stuff soon. Yeah, you, you need that work. and Get at him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, man. Appreciate you coming out, man. Partner around with being ready. Episode one. We up out of this joint, man. Peace out.